Hello. Welcome to Dazlius, learning the language of autism. I wanted to do a little video on Christmas. I think it's only a, what, 10 days away or something? <clears throat> and Christmas, you know, Christmas is a huge celebration for many. And there's lots of expectations for all of us. Um, and we all can step into the joy of that. And some of us can feel pressured by that. Um, so if you're an autistic child or adult, you know, um, Christmas can be, it can be enjoyable, of course, but it can also be, you know, an, a, a worrying, um, building anxiety um, experience as it becomes closer and closer and closer and everybody's talking about it and there's all this excitement and the energy is different and then you've got other people that are feeling really stressed and pressured because of money you know worries or um you know work or family members or you know somebody's sick or ill in the family it's a really interesting busy time for so many reasons and because Christmas is Christmas it seems to highlight um, the joys that you may have but also the the sadness or the fears that you may have too because it's a time that everybody is aware that you know lots of people come together um, so that can be a beautiful experience but it can also create some stress and stuff but it can also you know, highlight any anxieties or loneliness that somebody is already experiencing, it can highlight that tenfold. So the Christmas holidays, you know, for, can be a mixture of all those things. So I just wanted to talk about an autistic family, you know, a family with an autistic child or children or family members in it. Um, not just for the mums and dads and main carers, but also the extended family and how you can support your autistic, you know, grandchild or niece or nephew or cousin or goddaughter, son, you know, whatever. And, the, and, and your daughter, son in their parenting of their autistic child. So many comments and things I read are about expectations from family members regarding Christmas Day and what is expected behaviour around Christmas. So if you have an autistic child who fully engages in Christmas and is totally okay, then that's fantastic. And that does exist. But for the, those of you that have children that find the whole thing incredibly stressful or overwhelming, then here's some little tips. And oh my God, there are other websites and communities run by autistic people that can really help with this topic. Um, if you're a parent and you're a typical parent of an autistic child or children and you are beginning to feel the pressure and wondering, you know, am I going to be feeling isolated? How am I, how are we going to have a Christmas in our house that I'm used to having? So, you know, the reasons that, that children can be so overwhelmed um, who are autistic with Christmas is, I mean, they're pretty obvious really, but looking at it from a different perspective, if you are sensory, easily sensory overwhelmed, then, you know, everything looks different visually. There's Christmas decorations going up all over the place. There's flashing lights, there's sparkly lights, and it all looks beautiful if you enjoy it. But if you don't enjoy it, then it's like just a visual sensory overload and you're trying to figure out, you know, what why everything looks so different. And then if everybody else is joyful about it and you're the only one that's finding it challenging, that in itself can be very um, difficult because you feel so different and the expectation is that you're supposed to go, oh, lovely, wow, isn't that gorgeous? And if you're not feeling that and you don't express that and then people are saying, oh, why, it's Christmas, it's beautiful. And, you know, not you know, just surrounding people, you know, behaviours can become very, very 
you know, intense because it's just too much pressure. It's like everybody just turn the volume down, turn the color down, turn the energy down, the excitement down and all these questions about Christmas, Christmas, Christmas and food and smells and oh my God. <laughs> so when you look at it for a sensory lens, it's like, yeah, that's a lot. So all these things in mind, you know, having people come to your house, normally more than you would have on an average day at once, that is number one, can be like the anticipation of that, just that. Then to add to that, you have, you know, the joyful, um, loud and happy celebratory energy that, you know, hopefully people bring with them when they come to your home. And then there's presence exchange and come and open your present. Oh, come on, don't be shy or don't be rude or come on, it's so I've bought you a present. What do you say? You know, say thank you. And then everyone's watching as you open the present and and then you're supposed to like it and instantly respond to that without any processing time. And then if there's comments from people saying, Oh, don't you like it? And oh, I thought you like it. Oh, isn't it wonderful? And it's just too much. And often children will either, they'll, they'll become so overwhelmed by that, that their behavior becomes, you know, very non-Christmassy from an outside's perspective. So it, it can be deemed as they're ungrateful or, you know, just being, you know, unpleasant by throwing the toy or screaming or running away or hitting out or whatever it may be. And you know, it may be that, you know, if this was done step by step, stage, stage by stage, in their, on their terms, that they may be able to absorb that information and receive that present and then open it in their own sweet time. You know, it's always okay for you to explain all of this to your family members and friends before they come, before the day arrives. Preempt them, give them a heads up. And if they can honour that truly, great they're welcome but if they find that challenging then you know maybe a conversation of well maybe come next year or um you know that's how it has to be done in our house because it's all of your memories of christmas you know and we all have memories of christmas and we know how precious they are so you're creating new new traditions and new memories for you your child and your family and if if a christmas experience is traumatic and stressful you, know, you could remember that just as much as you remember the happy joyful Christmases so you know bear that in mind you're building memories um often giving presents out you know you can give the present and it can be given in a quiet space in your own time and let them open it in their own time or maybe ask if you do you want me to open it for you um, some children I've I've learned, including including um, our own son, he never used to like opening presents. He got used to get really upset about it, and he would even be upset if I tried to open a present because he didn't want it untouched or spoiled. Um, he didn't understand that there was a present inside, and it was for him. So um, we quickly we just accepted that, and we quickly learned that he didn't need his presents wrapped. He needed to be able to see what was behind that packaging. Um, and then we so we would just put them around the tree or um, sometimes we put some in a sack and leave some outside of the sack like a little trail and he would seem to enjoy that. Um, then he went through a stage of which he still has now um, where he will open presents now because he's had he had about three or four years of just being able to watch other people open their presents without any expectation on him at all. He had presents to open, people that bought, bought for him, but there was never any like, come on, George, come and open your present because we knew that that was too much for him. So we would just leave his presents and when, and, and when it, he was ready, he would open them in his own sweet time. But he did that because he was given a space to watch and see, you know, the process of present giving and what what happens when you open to open to presents some people generally go oh my god it would be something that they wanted 
So he learned that over three or four years. But even now, he loves the Christmas experience. He loves the lights and the tree and his familiar little toys and things that we've put out for years and years. And every now and then I add something new, which he embraces because he's got lots of familiar things around. But he's still, when he opens his presents, it's like he it just opens them, opens them up really quickly and he piles them up and then he just doesn't play with them. He goes back to his usual routine which makes perfect sense because just because somebody's bought that for you, just because it's Christmas, it's like, yeah, but this is what I know. And sometimes over the year to come, those new toys are interacted with and played with or acknowledged, and sometimes they're not. They're just not. Um, and I've learned over the years, you don't take that personally. It's not because that he's being ungrateful. It's not... It's not any of those things. It's just, it's how it is. Um, and the joy he gets when he opens a present and the joy he gets when he sees his sack um, is enough for him. And I accept that. It's about accepting what is somebody else's joy isn't always your joy and vice versa and being okay with that. And you finding your joys and keeping your joys, but not expecting your child who may find Christmas overwhelming to engage in that. You know, it's 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 a big adjustment. Um, you know, if Christmas has been full of people in your house and lots of laughing and, la and music and food and party games and all of that, and then suddenly all that feels like it's just stopped and kind of Christmas kind of go, oh, what kind of Christmas am I going to have? I get that it's a big adjustment, I know, because I've been there um, myself. And, and it's okay to say that. But just altering your expectations and giving family members, you know, sit down and have a proper conversation with them, a heartfelt conversation. And, you know, and be honest with them if you're feeling, if particularly if it's your first Christmas that's going to be different, and you're really feeling it yourself, then tell your family members that, that, you know, this is difficult for you too, but your priority is with your children, your child, and their happiness is your happiness, and you want to make Christmas, you know, a happy time for them and you. Who wants a stressed out child, and then, and then if they see that they've upset everybody else, that's just tenfold worse for them. So there are ways, as long as we prep and as long as we prepare, and then remember that if your family members or friends are unable to honour that, then you may be spending Christmas at home, you and your child, in a very different way. Find the joy in that if you can. You, you will. I have. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. It's always anything you do for the first time that's different is more challenging um and christmas is a biggie it's such a big one so i think being aware of all the noises smells you know it's school it's it's so different you know suddenly you know we're going out more we're going to more theaters and cinemas and christmas shows and then we've got to be in a play and, and, and it's all Christmas, 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 Christmas. I mean, if you have an autistic child that loves Christmas, then it is going to be heaven sent because they get to talk about it all the time. Um, but seeing different people in different costumes and, um, you know, shops that they used to go into suddenly look really different because they've got Christmas decorations and Santas in them and everybody's saying, oh, yay, yay. And it's just, it is a lot. It is a lot. But over the years, um, you know, our son, he's hes even now, you know, and for a few years, he's been able to go into a particular store near where we live, which has a beautiful Christmas um, display. It's like a big garden centre type place. And he really loves it. Um, even though he gets busy, um, he just, you know, I let him, so I let him, I support him in being there for as long a time or as short a time as he can handle. And sometimes he can't handle it at all. And 
won't even get out of the car and that's how I just say okay that's not a problem um, and then sometimes he'll come out and he'll go in and he'll have a lovely time and he'll walk all around the Christmas displays and he'll watch all the singing things that are happening and then we leave and I'm okay with that and I think that sometimes if we if we really listen and accept and honour the days when it's difficult and challenging then that doesn't mean it's always going to be like that. It's like next time they may be able to do a little bit more. They might not, but maybe they can. And this is my whole theme throughout all of the videos that I do that I've learned the most is that small baby steps, um, no pressure, really honouring, really listening and accepting um, when your child is overwhelmed or doesn't want to do something um, is the key to building trust and to it kind of it kind of gives space for your child to be able to figure out who they are and what they need and what they like and by you honoring that it helps them understand themselves more um if they're always being challenged constantly to step into a non-autistic expectation of world um they could they're never going to be able to figure out what you know what what they they may end up liking something that they find really stressful the first few times but if they're not given that space to figure that out then then it may be that they'll always dislike something so it's always worth taking your time because christmas you know it still is too overwhelming for our son to have people lots of people coming into the house um it's you know those things are still too overwhelming but at least now there are Christmas decorations that we can have. There is music we can have in the house as long as it's not too loud. There are presents that he will unwrap and he will engage in school, in his class, with making Christmas things, cooking. So much more that he does now that he couldn't do when he was little and he's 14 now. So, you know, and, and that's important which means everybody gets to enjoy a Christmas. So I hope that some of the things that I've said can help you. Another thing, actually, is when you buy lots of presents for your child, that's fine. You, If you can, you know, buy presents that you know they like. Buy things in a theme that you know they like. Um, I'm not saying don't, don't try a few new things, but you know don't expect them to greet it with joy if they do fantastic but just be mindful of that and maybe don't give them to them all at once you know maybe you could have like a, a, a whole week or a whole month or a whole two months of just giving a present like once a week or once a day depending and and that's okay too like you can have your own Christmas in your own way there are no rules there are traditions and there are expectations but really you know, you can create your own um, rules and your own time spans and spaces. And I mean, our tree, our boy loves the Christmas tree and our tree is normally up until the end of February, beginning of March. If it's, this one's a potted real tree, so it should be fine. As long as it looks good and, and George enjoys it. And then I gradually take the Christmas decorations down bit by bit and the tree is always the last to go. Um, and I often did that in the beginning with Christmas decorations too. I would put them up bit by bit. Um, and George didn't like me doing it in front of him. So I learned that real quick. So I would put the Christmas decorations up bit by bit while he wasn't around. So that when he came home, he would just see one or two things that were added to the house. And he seemed to be able to cope with that. You know, remember their home is their sanctuary. Their home is their safe space. Their home is the place where they can hopefully express themselves freely the positive and the not so positive um and it is their home as well as your home so you know just sometimes we can get over we can get carried away by the you know excitement of christmas and you know we, we look forward to being social and seeing our friends and family members but if it all goes wrong and it all gets too stressful for your child then nobody has any fun anyway so you know if people do come to the house and your child is happy for them to come to the house, but they do not want to engage. Why everyone's at 
at the table eating Christmas dinner and having a lovely time, you know, and your child prefers to be in the other room or in their bedroom or in the lounge doing their usual thing and they want to eat on their own, try not to feel bad about that. Accept that. It's okay. As long as you let them know that they are welcome and that you love them, but if they do not want to, that that is okay too. And, you know, if your child is able to understand and is, is, um, can communicate and express their needs, you know, you can have these conversations with your children before Christmas comes and really kind of ask them what would help them have a nice Christmas and, and find a solution together rather than, a, well, that's how it is and this is going to happen and you're just going to have to suck it up. It's like everyone, can, there's always a way that everybody can get a peaceful, joyful couple of days during the Christmas period. Um, you know, I urge you to join other Facebook groups, Facebook groups of other parents of autistic children, um, especially groups that are run by autistic people because they can really help you in these situations and experiences. And, and, you know, the more we pull together, the more we communicate, the more we share our views and our feelings and our fears and our joys around our autistic experiences, the more we learn and the more we can support. Because what you've learned might be able to help another family. What you don't yet know, another family may be able to help you. Um, so, you know, please keep sharing, keep expressing, keep exploring, keep asking and listening. Um, there's so much support and so many autistic people out there. Oh my God, I'm just watching it. It's just not enough time to watch everything that's out there just from autistic communities. There's so much um, and it's so helpful. So I wish you all a very, very peaceful and loving Christmas, whatever it is you do, however your Christmas ends up looking like. I hope that you can find, find the joy in it. And um, remember that you are a part of a community, a huge community of wonderful, creative, inspiring people. And this is a time I think especially to try and connect with those communities around you. Um, and the beauty of social media is that wherever you live, whatever your situation, you can connect to other people via cyberspace. And that is a real blessing. So do reach out, do keep talking and sharing. And um, things, you know, always are less challenging when you share your thoughts. Okay, happy Christmas. And um, I'm probably going to have a week without sending out a video um, just because of the holidays so I'll be back um, in the new year probably the first week of the new year okay thank you for watching and please do subscribe ready for the new year thank you bye